Welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. It is time for an overnight adventure that is different than any that we've done before. In this episode, I'm going to MacGyver the shelter for the night. Everything that I need is inside of this backpack. And basically with this episode, we are building the shelter from scratch and we will do so together. And the main component for this shelter is cling wrap, plastic wrap. <laughs> I have a feeling that this is going to be a lot of fun. Now, please allow me to explain why I'm doing this. In the past, folks, I've spoken many times about my childhood and how my brother and I spent so much time in the outdoors building shelters and whatnot. And that's because we didn't have anything else to do. We didn't have many toys growing up, certainly no video games. So we spent our time outside building shelters, forts, and whatnot. And oftentimes we would use supplies that we found around the house. Now, my dad, he always did construction. So there was plywood, there was plastic, and we would basically take anything that wasn't nailed down. My brother and I had so much fun doing this in the forest that I would like to share this with you all. With those shelters that we would make, sometimes they would keep us dry, sometimes they wouldn't, sometimes they would fail miserably. And in this episode, it could fail, who knows, who knows. I'm going to try to do something new and not something easy. The easiest thing to do is a TP setup. All you have to do is get the form, wrap it, and it's good to go. It's the easiest shelter possible. There's no skill to it. For this episode, it is going to be different. And my plan is to start out with some sort of frame, which I need to gather the supplies for here in just a minute. To start off here, let's do a gear dump. Let me show you what I have to work with. The ground sheet is a military surplus product, and this is going to protect our shelter. So I have a rain jacket. Just in case it rains, there is a chance of rain today. Handsaw, hatchet, duct tape. I have two rolls of plastic wrap. One of them is open. So I don't know how much is left of this roll. Less than 200 square feet. So here's a funny story for you all. Susie doesn't know that I took these from the house. I did place an order on Amazon and it is set to arrive today because I'm a fantastic husband. So if she goes looking for this right now, she's not going to find it. But if the mail comes, she gets it, opens it up. She's gonna be like, what the? What the heck? Then she'll go look and find that I took them, so. <laughs> I think that's funny. Next up, we have my food, which I have no idea what is inside of this bag. About a week ago, I asked Susie to pick up some meals and some food that she thought would be interesting for me to eat. So, I don't know what is in this bag. I have no clue. I have a cordage bag. I have a fire kit, pot, I figured that I might need it. I have no idea. Now, this is an interesting item right here. This is called the Skeeter Beater. And what this is, is basically mesh, and it's designed to go over your window on your car to keep out mosquitoes and bugs. Well, I knew for this episode, I'm building a tent. It's hot, it's humid. I need airflow, but I also need to seal it up to keep out the bugs. So I brought this. I'm not sure how we are going to use this yet. We shall see. I also have some additional cordage just in case I need it. Or if there's time, I may work on some things around camp here. Next, I have a knife, a handmade knife. A viewer had this made for me and I am so incredibly thankful. Buddy, you rock. And the last item, is a United States Marine Corps poncho liner inside of a stuff sack. I have no sleeping pad and that's because I'm going to do it like I did it when I was a kid. Just sleep on the ground and enjoy. I have some water and folks, there you go. That is all. To start off, I'm going to package all this back up, hang the pack off the ground, and then I'm going to begin focusing on the frame of my build. Might need this. 
By the way, everyone, did you all see the pile of bear poop over there? It's huge. The last time that I was out here, about a week ago, I thought that I was looking at bear tracks on the ground. A deer had come through and stepped on them, so I wasn't quite sure. That confirms it. So, so this is what I'm thinking. Because I have this rectangular shaped ground sheet, I am going to build a rectangular shaped shelter. So it's going to be roughly three feet wide. It'll be about eight feet long. I don't know. I might make it around three feet high, something like that. I will do a vent on both sides with the mesh. And I will put the door possibly on this side, actually. Have a door right here so I can capture some of that air blowing through. I think that will work. <laughs> this is going to be fun. So to start off, I have more than a few beams here, which could work. I've used these in the past to set up a huge tarp. So These three would work perfectly. Okay, so we have four there for the main part of the frame. Now we need supports, and that means that we need eight. One, two, three, four, and four more at the other end. So, okay. We might get a few out of that, that'll work. We'll have to get some more, but that right there is a good start. How tall do I want this thing? That's pretty good right there. folks that should be my last one as far as the supports go so we have a support for this side a support for this side and two supports for the back 
Now this is going to be the hard part. Framing is always the most difficult because it takes a little bit of work to get everything in place and everything tight. Now to start off, I'm using a slip knot because slip knots are incredibly awesome when it comes to lashing things together. When it comes to building, it's the easiest knot to begin with. And then from there, you can use whatever you want, whatever you need. Having everything tight is the key to building a good shelter such as this. And it doesn't matter if you're rigging something up like this or building a bushcraft shelter. You wanna have everything nice and tight, as tight as possible. This is what I have in mind. I have the frame right here. This is a support. Now check this out. Roll it over. Now I can connect it to the other side and it's all beginning to come together. This is a lot of fun, it really is. What this equates to is bushcraft skills, survival skills, being able to get out, think outside of the box, and come up with a solution that works. Now, to be honest, if the solution works, that's a huge plus, but there will be many times when it doesn't, and that's life. Part of the learning process is failing. So do not be afraid to fail. I've mentioned this before in other episodes, but my brother and I, we would build shelters that would give you the chills when you walk by. They were so hideous. <laughs> and that's what made the entire process so much fun. Another aspect that I find very enjoyable to all of this is the fact that you have to think on the fly. You have to improvise on the fly. You have to come up with all sorts of crazy ideas, crazy fixes, crazy solutions. I like that. In those moments, just like this, you will begin thinking outside of the box not only when it comes to your outdoor skills, but in your daily life as well. So getting out, coming up with ideas just like this, it has major impacts on your overall well-being, on your overall life, because you'll take those improvising skills and use them throughout your life. I'm going to do a temporary tie off here so I can use this remaining cord to tie off the last bit of the frame. Again, folks, pull everything as tight as you can to prevent slippage. Tell you what, I was going to use this as part of the frame, but this is really, really heavy. If I could find something lighter, it would work better. 
And in truth, that is true for this as well. These are much, much lighter. So I just got the frame done, it is complete, and all in all, I like it. If I was to do this again, I would raise one side up a little bit higher. I didn't think about that when I was designing this. But if one side was higher, I could slope it. That way the rain would just run right off. Now we're moving on to the wrapping stage. Now as is, this would be very complicated. It would be hard to do. So I need to think about raising this up raising up this platform, getting it off the ground. Maybe a good foot, that way I can easily wrap this thing. I could go about this numerous ways. I could stack underneath it, I could build an X platform. I could cut some logs to go under here to lift it up. I tell you what, that's a good idea, but luckily I don't have to cut them because I have them already. Perfect. It's funny folks, each one of these logs weighs about 40 pounds and that's because they're full of water. <laughs> My friends, it is time for lunch and also coffee. And that means I have to go back because I forgot my water, so. Before I go down, let's take a look at what Susie packed in this bag for me. All right, Susie, what's in the bag? So we have, awesome, a can of beans, a can of beanie weenies, 
a uh, kit of sunflower seeds, jerky, and nuts. <laughs> I have two packets of chicken. One barbecue, one teriyaki. Strange. I have some curry noodles. A lemon bar. And a package of mashed potatoes. Everyone, cheers. Oh yeah, that's rocket fuel right there. The tent building project is going smoothly. I'm having a blast. <laughs> that really is a lot of fun. Temperature wise, it's not bad. It's about 74 degrees right now. Tonight, low around 54, which is going to feel amazing. That is one thing that I love about the mountains. It is warm during the day and cool at night. 54 degrees, yeah, that's not bad. Here in the mountains of North Carolina, it really doesn't get hot, and if it does, it's short-lived. Now, this year, we've had quite a few days in the 80s, and that is rare. I mean, I think it was last year, it was about 75 throughout the summer. There may have been like two days in the 80s. Usually once, twice a year, it'll hit 90, but that's about it. What are the temps like where you are? Comment down below. Beanie weenies. I haven't had these in a long time. That is not bad at all. Probably because I'm hungry. This is a out of the can into the man meal right here. It's pretty good. Someone recently asked if I would show more harvesting wild edibles here on the channel. And that is something that I'm not going to do. This is my philosophy when it comes to wild edibles. Many years ago, I was working with a survival expert and we were talking about such and he stated that only a fool would try to identify a plant from a book. And he's absolutely right. I agree 100%. If you're doing so, that's up to you. And I mean no offense. But you have to look at the facts. First off, there's no book out there that shows you the entire growth stage for a plant, a wild edible, so that you can clearly and 100% identify it. Especially when compared to something else that looks very, very similar. At basically any given time, you could do a search on Google and you could find news stories about people who were either poisoned or that were killed from eating wild edibles. People make identification mistakes and they pay the price for it. It boils down to a matter of safety and a matter of common sense. You may see me talk about a certain plant or even eat one, but I'm not going to focus too close in on it because I don't want to encourage somebody to go out and just try something haphazardly. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. With that being said, over the last 32 years or so, I've sucked up as much information as I possibly could about the wild edibles in this area in North Carolina, Western North Carolina. And I can tell you that Lone Wolf Mountain is an abundant source of food. Onion, garlic, wintercrest, water leaf, puffball mushrooms, honey mushrooms, onion grass, milkweed, and then of course all the nuts, acorns, black walnuts, hickory chestnut. Then you have roots, seeds, and so much more. But does that mean that I could stay here, eat and be happy and healthy? No, not by any means. Not at all. Wild edibles depend on multiple factors, quantity and season. In nature, everything is staged and wild edibles are no different. If you personally are interested in wild edibles, make sure to get the proper training, hands on. You need someone to show you what will feed you and what will kill you, so. Maybe I was just hungry, but those beanie weenies were freaking awesome. I think I said earlier that the hardest part was tying up the frame. That's probably not true. This will likely be rather difficult. I cannot wait to see how easy or hard this is. This could have been the worst idea of all time. I don't know. Now this is starting to go a little bit quicker. I'm getting my rhythm. I'm figuring out what works and what doesn't work.
That is awesome, everyone. And one roll really went a long way too. So I'm just reinforcing it now. Going back over, I'll finish up this roll. I have the body of the tent basically done. Now it's time to move to the sides and sealing this up. All right, everybody, I am going to turn off the camera before I use all this memory card. I will bring you all back when it's done. All right, everyone, I am done. This is awesome. It also looks like a coffin, so uh, that's unfortunate. But this is my coffin. I made this. This is my shelter. Check it out. This is one door. I have another door on the other side. This is also my mesh window. I was going to put another mesh window on this side, but it turns out I only had two sections of mesh to use. So I'm going to use this as a door instead. The key to making this simple was the external frame. That way I could wrap on the inside and not have to worry about the frame itself. It would have been a serious chore to wrap the frame to. As I finished this up, I checked the weather and the radar and there is no rain in sight, zero chance of rain tonight. Now, if I had to, if there was a chance of rain, I could put a vestibule right here and of course on the back side, which would be very easy to do. Just take more plastic wrap and basically build a tarp. Tonight I should sleep good inside of my coffin. I mean tent. This is not bad at all. In fact, I can feel the air rushing in from down here. It feels great in here. Oh, yeah. I'll use my backpack as a pillow. I have the mesh here on the back. I can feel air coming in. I have that mesh down here at the bottom. Is there room for improvement? Yes. With the frame, I made it about six and a half feet long. But when I wrap this away from the frame, I made it considerably shorter than that. Because of that, I have to sleep diagonally so I can fit in here. So yeah, it is a little bit tight. Without a doubt, it's better than any shelter that I built when I was a kid. Oh man. Feels great. Remember the bark? that I scraped off of that limb earlier today. I've allowed this to air dry, and now it is ready to go as fire starter. All I have to do is just break it up, expose those fibers, grab the ferro rod, and we will be off. When you're working with something fibrous like this, take your time and also take breaks, especially in warm weather. As you expose those fibers, all of that moisture will just seep right into them. So when it comes time to spark, it won't catch. It'll be too damp. So take your time, go slow, don't sweat. And if you do sweat, just let it air dry for about 15 minutes. That will greatly enhance your chances of capturing that spark. This will be a challenging fire to get going. And that's because everything here is soaking wet. Not out of the woods yet. You can see how much moisture is in that. 
It's damp. I forgot to mention it, but I do have a headlamp. I've never had this type of ramen before. Curry ramen. I love curry, so hopefully this will be really good. No meal is complete without some protein. So let's put the teriyaki chicken in there. Maybe this makes sense, I don't know. Teriyaki chicken with curry? <laughs> Sounds bizarre, but that's what you get when you're not very specific. It smells weird. Hmm. It smells weird. And it tastes weird. <laughs> you can't taste the meat the teriyaki at all. They claim this is curry. It does not taste like curry, but it's not bad though. The only way to describe this is weird. <laughs> With upcoming overnight adventures, expect to see me on the trail. It is time to get out. It is time to go explore and I can't wait. Also, in the next couple of months, Susie and I will be doing a road trip, possibly to Utah which I am super excited about. She is coming up with the plans right now, and it's time for a road trip in Drifter. Let's test out that truck, what do you all say? I've been looking forward to a trip like this since I bought the truck, and that's the reason why I bought the truck. Before we head off on that adventure, we will have at least one bushcraft episode. That will be a multi-day adventure, and I plan to have at least one truck camp episode, maybe two. If there's something that you would like to see specifically, make sure to comment down below because I do appreciate it and I do read the comments. everybody i am going to bed watch some crappy movies and get some sleep it's already after 10 o'clock and it has been a long day oh man that cool air coming in feels great all in all i'm very impressed with this shelter <laughs> unless something catastrophic happens this has worked out well hopefully condensation won't be too bad inside of this even with the vents there probably will be some but uh yeah, that's how it goes. Anyways, good night, everybody. See you all in the morning. All right, everybody. It is in the morning sometime. And uh, there's a deer up on the hill. It's been snorting at me for hours now. <sighs> that's funny. I hear you. You can have the place back tomorrow. <laughs> All right, I'm going back to sleep. I don't care if this deer's mad or not. Good night. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is a little bit after 7.30. And the forest is alive. I slept good inside of my coffin. Also known as my tent. Um, this is a nice shelter. It really is. I mean, I can sit up in it. It's the perfect height. I have plenty of room here for my shoulders. It's a little short, but that's okay. 
Yeah, I like it. I do. This has really worked out well. As far as last night, pretty smooth sailing. Uh, there was a deer who was raging mad. <laughs> who snorted at me like all night. But, um, outside of that, it's been quiet and peaceful. <laughs> oh, man. No, oh, I tell you what. I think it's time to get up and have some coffee. Oh yeah, I stayed 100% bug free last night. Nothing got inside of this tent. Last night before I went to bed, I banked this fire. And I can use it this morning because it is cold. Let me tell you, that feels amazing. It's the Plastic Wrap Shelter Building Challenge. Who's up for it? <laughs> Everyone, cheers. Well, for this episode, that pretty much wraps it up. It was short and sweet. We created an awesome shelter. It's been a lot of fun. And this really is a throwback to my childhood. My brother and I, sometimes our friends, this is what we would do. <laughs> Basically, all of my outdoor skills my bushcraft skills began with shelters like this. It really did. In the forest with natural debris and sometimes garbage. Yeah. It's funny, around the house, if it wasn't nailed down, my brother and I would take it. At one point in time in our childhood, we had a fort. A tree had fallen into the woods and it made for a perfectly flat area. So we had a piece of plywood on top of that and like pieces of plastic draped hung all over the place all taped together tied together it was awful <laughs> but that was our fort my brother and I we would go there we would meet the neighbor kid and we would all hang out we had some good times there talk about growing up in the forest you know what I mean that was fun make sure to comment down below and share your suggestion for the next overnight adventure what do you all want to see? If you have a question as to why I did something with this shelter, feel free to email me. I answer every single email. And if for some reason you don't get a response, that means I did not get your message, send it again. Oftentimes with a video, you can't see why someone is doing something specifically. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I will see you in a couple days with the next upload, and I will see you next Thursday with the next overnight adventure. Strength and honor, everybody. Take care. Thank you.